Ladies and gentlemen, the final day is here. The International 2017 group stage draws to a close with Cloud9 fighting for their playoff lives, their hopes and dreams, perhaps on the verge of being shattered if they don't have a good day. Digital Chaos, meanwhile, still in the thick of things in the group with a shot at the upper bracket if the day goes their way. I'm LD, I'm joined here by Lumi, an unabashed Cloud9 fan. How you doing, Lumi? I ain't Claw9 fan. <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> Have you abandoned ship? No, I'm just kidding. I'm still a Claw9 fan. And uh, more more than like just wishing them to win, I just wish to see good games of Dota. Uh, Digital Chaos, very, very good team. I think uh, a lot of people haven't gave them the credit they deserve coming into this tournament. You know, they recently took a game off of LFY. You know who else took a game off FY? Nobody else. That's correct. So you they know, only have one loss. They only uh, have one loss. Now, now, of course, the rumor is already floating that LFY is, you know, intentionally drafting heroes that aren't good so that they can force OG into the lower bracket, um, you know, by giving DC the boost above them. I don't buy any of that. I think DC is a good team. I think DC, uh, and I think if you're LFY, you're, yeah, sure, maybe you're experimenting a bit, but that's all intelligent preparation for the main event. You want to yep. see what works. You want to see what strategies you can employ. You want to show as many different looks as possible so teams have a hard time drafting against you come main event and you don't get, you know, figured out a la CDEC at TI5. Exactly. Well, let's focus on the matchup at hand. And for the first time, we're going to not see a phase boot lich by Paladine. We might see it in this series. The phase boot lich is banned out. Have the, uh, have the intelligent minds of Dota 2 figured out what the phase boot shadow blade lich is all about. You're the analyst, Lumi, so I don't actually know. But. You know, like I talked to Ake, talked to PyCat, nobody knows. Uh, <laughs> nobody knows what it's about. Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't tell you either then. Yeah. But, um, you know, good for harassing, obviously. Get that, I guess. Get those, it's good with the Drow strat, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but obviously Drow is banned. So let's look at, yeah, the actual picks for this one. Nyx Assassin, first overall grab by DC. Uh, and then the Dazzle Night Stalker, the quick reply. So the Quap rounds things out. And I imagine will likely be the Abed hero. So, slightly unusual, I would say, to be grabbing your mid in Phase 1. Mm. Uh, now, Abed, obviously, is a fantastic player. I'm sure he'll do a great job on the co-op and all. But most teams tend to reserve that mid for 4th or oftentimes even 5th pick. And I think you were asking me just like two days ago, why haven't we seen co-op or why isn't co-op as successful? And I think this is the reason why you pick her too early. Quap isn't the end all be all in the mid lane. You could easily just put a Viper there, and what the hell is Quap gonna do? She's gonna lose the lane. Then I'll tell you what. And let me tell you, Fada is also a. I'm still having flashbacks to scumbag that. Viper picker. So. I'm still, I'm still having flashbacks to that game where Hani was when when they reworked Corrosive Skin. And oh, Hani yeah. was throwing Shadow Strikes at the Viper, and he actually killed himself on Corrosive. Yeah, there, there's just really little oh, that you can man. do now. It's not a good matchup. Granted, Boba does come into a lane a lot to give the assistance to, to the Queen of Pain. Should the matchup be, be terrible, but as we've seen in these uh, TI7 matches, that's what all the four position supports are doing. So I'm expecting Aoi to also do the same, to give Quap a, a little bit of a tough time. Okay, they'll ban out the Sven, the like in here. Big objective takers, definitely Mason comfort picks. So, perhaps we'll have to step a bit outside of his safe zone. Fourth ban now from DC. It'll be that Viper. Okay. So, makes they were sense. listening, Lumi. Uh, which does suggest very strongly that this will just be a mid quap, No shenanigans in play. Now, DC are not a team that really mix up the lanes or the roles too much, at least from the games I've seen. Uh, didn't get to cast so much in the group state, so it's possible that changed. But, like, you, you basically always expect Abed mid. It's always going to be Mason in the safe lane. Uh, maybe once in a while they'll do like an aggro try, but he's always the you know the one position farmer, and then you know from there everything's very standard for him in the off lane. Oh, okay. The support sticking to their roles, Dubu and Bulba. So. so it looks like we're gonna have a little bit of mix up here. I was expecting a four position nice stalker, but MSS really loves playing this hero in the off lane as well. So we might just get the Owie slaughter instead. A lot of minus armor to start things off here for Cloud Nine. Dazzle, Slaughter, if they pick up a core that also gives you minus armor, let's say the Fata TA. Uh, things could get really... The Lich is banned and the Dazzle is picked, yeah. so where is your anti-physical damage now? The best option, I guess, is maybe Visage? No, not obviously won't help the team so much, but yeah. you know, aside from that, you can get like Just a Darkseer, you can build a mech, and 
I think basically solo quests, solo uh, crest buyers, medallion buyers, which so far I don't think Silence or Nyx, Nyx uh, Assassin are, are good at. Maybe you pick up like an LC offlane to debuff the slaughter amp. That's also a way to go. Um, but I feel like Bristleback now is a very strong pick for Cloud9. There's a lot of minus armor. You could run into this lineup. Bristleback as a hero doesn't really care too much about what Nyx and Silence are up to. So you give him a very tough time. In terms of the mid position, um, always like the OD versus Quad matchup. It's going to be a Death Prophet instead. Goes really well with the minus armor synergy. Um, and the lane matchup against Quap is not too bad. Also builds nicely into Yules as well as Rod of Atos. Yules on Quap and then a Silence on top of her, she's dead. Rod of Atos on her, she's dead. So there's a lot of good counters coming out of Cloud9 already. Definitely a solid pushing composition now with the Exorcism in play, but it is a pretty long cooldown, uh, which is a lot unlike the rest of the team, so see how often they're able to skirmish once that last selection is made. Obviously still everyone wondering what will the Envy hero be? What will Jackie Mal play this game? What will that because that really will decide the overall strategy. If they suddenly snap up a Naga, very different game from if he's say on a juggernaut, for yep. example. I, I still think the bristlebacks a good pick here. Um, works well with the minus armor. So far Digi Chaos is very soft against Bristle running at you, but we'll see where they go with that. That's for DC. Still looking for the Mason core, and then their... I guess the question is, is it an offlane Nyx or a support Nyx? I would guess support, but Bulba's played quite a bit of it. Yeah. What do you think about a Batrider offlane pick right here? They do have the Silencer mm -hmm. already. Good. Global Bat ult, quite good. Their team fight's gonna be a little suspect, I guess, but then so too is Cloud Nines. Okay. Ooh. Mason Terrorblade coming out. And Cloud Nine, not that great at dealing with Terrorblade. I mean, the Night Stalker Silence, the DP Silence are, are pretty good early to mid game, I suppose. And there is no save for that TB aside from the global. But once he gets his Manta, potentially BKB later on in the game, like they, they are not that good at killing the illusions. They are not that good at chain stunning him down so at least not through global there, this, there's a lot of silences and stuns but right but if he gets a mantor and or bkb like those right. are it's really just crush yeah at that point you know so i it could really work well with this terrorblade pick and they are going to ban the bat so good call there cloud nine anticipating dc might want that yeah and suddenly the the bristle back pick isn't nearly as good anymore you know, just going back to the problem that you addressed, like there's not enough burst damage to kill the Terror Blade, there's not enough stuns to kill the Terror Blade. Is there any safe lane carry that you think will solve that those two problems? Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, Ember Spirit is an Envy staple. Normally you would see that hero mid. Sure. Ember's pretty good against Terror Blade. Maybe the Faces Void? Void's okay. Yeah, it, make, it, makes, it makes them so... Awkward though, right? Because they have these two heroes that just can't fight regularly, Void and DP, and then three that really want to be skirmishing constantly. Night Stalker, Slaughter, Dazzle, so. Yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about the synergy there. Obviously, DP and Void as a duo are good. I mean, I just I just don't see any other good options uh, to deal with the Terror Blade. DC also. Well, DC's gonna take out the Phantom Lancer. Honestly, Phantom Lancer has been a, a fairly popular pick. Amongst the carries here at TI7, but I don't think it's a good pick here. It just does nothing against Terrorblade. But. Yeah, PL wouldn't have offered all that much. It, it, it maybe more fits into Cloud9 wanting to play their own game. You know, rather than draft a TB counter, it's like Night Stalker, Slaughter, PL running at you all the time. What's the silence they're going to do about that? So. In that sense, I do like it. DC will snag the Marana. And now the question of roles does come into play. Is that a support Marana or a support Nick? Oh, here we go. Uh, it doesn't do anything that addresses the problem in terms of killing the Terror Blade. But one thing that Arc Warden does give you is dealing with ranged heroes that push your towers. You put those magnetic field down, 
on your two buildings. Mm -hmm. And then they got what post, the hell is then clean? they got a post up exactly. Know? So I think they're gonna just force digital chaos in awkward positions and take fights there. Um, they still don't solve the silencer problem in terms of the global. I don't think any of these heroes itemize well against global apart from Death Prophet. So. So the awkward thing for DC here is they're running a tricord. Quap, TB, Mirana, all three heroes requiring a lot of farm, mm -hmm. a lot of me time, and the support duo is pretty greedy. Silencer and Nyx. This could, all, I mean, we'll see how DC executes it, but in, on paper it kind of looks like that draft we saw from um, Fnatic yesterday, where their only team fight initiator, like their only real lockdown, was the DJ. Sand Kane, who was basically Five a six position, position yeah. you know, and was still no blink dagger at like 20 minutes. So I don't know if that's going to be the case here for DC. And Nyx is not quite as reliant on the blink, but yeah, this is a little greedy from, from DC and obviously a flavor pick from C9. Yeah, I, well, think uh, Arc Warden fully embodies what, you know, the MV efficiency is about. This hero is about efficiency, you know, just buying the right items. With your ultimate, you double your net worth for a, a short period of time. That is probably one of the strongest ultimate if you kind of just put it like that. If you had the micro skills to pay the bills. Yeah, which I, I assume he has. You know, he plays Naga. So we'll see how things go. Also, he what what uh, Arc Warden gives you in the lane is he dominates, uh, dominates most off lanes. Like, what the hell is Nyx Assassin going to do? Well, sorry, not Nyx. Marana. Doesn't matter, really, whoever's in the off lane. You give him a two versus one, and the off laner just cannot come into the lane thanks to Flux. That is true. So, looking at the lanes now, as the teams get underway, DC six and six, still an outside shot at that upper bracket. Really a lot at stake for them. C9 slightly ahead of the competition in the rush to not be eliminated. But it looks like DC are gonna throw them around in the off lane. For Ev's hands, Abed going to be playing that co-op mid, so everything looking pretty standard for their laning setup. As for C9, the MSS off lane Slardar, Fada mid to P, and the safe lane NV Arc Warden. So yeah, nothing nothing unusual emerging from these laning setups. Yep. And more than anything, I think both of these teams are teams that generally draft well, but they win or lose based solely on execution. I think more for Cloud9 in this particular event. Their drafts have been looking fine, but the execution has not been. So, uh, reportedly, MSS is the only player that has been consistently playing well, and they're. I well, want to say. I heard he had a couple of really bad games yesterday from okay. uh, another commentator. So. Well, I guess, as a whole, the team then is not doing too well. But one thing that is for sure, I think more than two players need to show up for Cloud9 if they want to take down DC. Like. People need to, uh, this team needs to fire on all cylinders moving forward if they want to have a good shot moving into TI. Completely agree with you there, Lumi. Even if you manage to scrape through the main event, if you're not playing with the full five man squad at the top of the game, you are liable to get bounced in the BO1s. Yep. So here we go. C9 will be pushing, going for the early creep blocks here. We will see Bulba landing at least some moderate assist to Abed in the mid lane. He'll be dueling with Owies. Night Stalker in that department. Leaving a DP versus Quap matchup. Likely just a bit of a farming skirmish. At least initially. But Any particular players that jump out at you, like either player hero combination, someone that you're really keeping your eyes on is like a, a huge impact force in this game, Lemmy? Well, obviously it's the Arc Warden on Envy. Um, given it's a hero that we haven't seen too often, I believe this is the first time we've seen uh, Cloud9 actually pick the hero, at least in this event. And I'm, I'm curious in terms of what he's going to do. He's always going to start with the Hannah Midas, I imagine. Um, but in terms of what, what's the item afterwards. Also, the other hero is going to be his uh, counterpart on the enemy side, Mason, on the Tear Blade. We, we mentioned in the drafting stage that, you know, this game, this is a Tear Blade game. There's not many counter, not much burst damage that he needs to worry about. And thus, he should be able to run crazy in these team fights. Yeah, early days here, but we do see the offlane Slardar struggling uh, quite a bit to really get much out of this lane. Though the lane is pushing, yep. so he'll have more openings moving forward. Simultaneously, for have also been bullied. And Pai's actually going to find him all the way, lurking back near the neutrals. Just wanted to do a little bit of catch-up farming. He is going to miss on the arrow. Had he connected, it might have been a kill opportunity. With Bulba sweeping in. There's no impale. Career, but so Actually, yeah, he yeah. did already take the monoprop. Pilot that even cancels the clarity. He's like, get out of here. Hits him a couple of times. 
and walks it off. Space created. You were mentioning that Slaughter is having a tough time. This is notoriously one of Slaughter's worst matchups. The Slaughter, Slaughter versus Silencer. He just walks up at you and glaives. Uh, report, reportedly, I've heard, you know, Slaughter's where they are kept at level one by, you know, a level three Silencer on a support position. It, it's just one of the most horrible off lane versus support matchup there is in the whole game. Yeah, and Slaughter not really the best catch up hero. You know, he can go to the jungle with an Iron Talon, but nobody wants to commit to that in the off lane nowadays. Okay, Aoi finds himself with double damage and. Yubu needs to be somewhat careful, but looks like he should be fine. MSS already committed a sprint here. Now he does have the boots advantage, but by the time he gets in range, it looks like Dubu should be back to the tower using the fog nicely here as 4F also being brought low by Envy, trying to throw out those nukes with the Spark Wraith and try and pick them off. Can't quite get the job done. Boba also forced to retreat. Pressured a lot in this lane. Yep. Important and definitely... Quite good in these small skirmishes with the raw nuke damage you can put out. Yeah, any kind of engagements away from the crit wave and where Flux could give you that insane damage output is going to be crazy. How Arc Warden develops as a core. Think back to the days of Techies, you know, back in the TI5 final. What ends up happening with the hero is that he gets farm, it, it makes it super hard for anybody to come into the lane, and then he'll just basically spam Spark Wraith in the lane. So you can't really gank him, and he's going to just sit there and farm and be a ticking time bomb. So we'll see if that's going to be the playstyle that Envy does go for. Like, again, this hero, I don't think you know teams and players have all collectively figured out yet. He could buy pretty much any single item in the whole game, so we'll see how it goes. Early days here, but all the farm looking relatively even from position to position. The one that's struggling a little bit more than you would hope for is this offlane Marana. Only... 6 CS. Getting outstripped actually by the slaughter, but now they're going to make their move here, jumping onto Pilot Die. Arrow's still on cooldown, but they'll just use the leap to no try grave. and get closer. But here comes Envy with the nuke. Suddenly, Bulba gets turned on his heels. The arrow's available. He's going to turn back for Envy to ensure Bulba gets away safely. But in doing so, Pilot Die is also guaranteed a ticket out of there. Yep. I guess small victory there for. Uh, and now it's DC. nighttime, Lumi. So Aoi's on the move. Okay, he's got Arcane the Arcane Rune. Rune. Yeah. That low cooldown Void. They're gonna sprint in. Here comes the Silence. Here comes the Void. And now MSS gonna line up that Crush. Very easy kill there. They perfect chain them. Do they have a Silence available? They don't. You say easy. Maybe not so Abed easy. says peasy. <laughs> He's out of there. Okay. Well, pretty good uh, dodge here by Abed. It's still while Forever is being pressured top. At least he is not giving up kills yet. But Owie. Does like to change that still only Ooh. the level one void. He sees Moran and Moran doesn't see him, so he just needs Is this the right build? Like the one early point in silence? Normally we just see most night soccer players get the two points in void. It's because he's trying to gank things like Marana as well as Quap, right? Like if you don't get that point of silence, you're not gonna get the kill. He's gonna make that arcane rune doing so much work, lowering the cooldown and allowing him to fire off so many different spells. Now he might die here. Nice Stalker is already buying a ton of nah, items. Ah, now he's fine. Yeah, he's going to give him the loop-de-loop, -loop and he is out. A lot of time spent mid and top, which does mean DC can begin focusing on objectives as Dubu will tank up. MSS is crushed there. No points in the bash yet. Yep. But this tower taking some hefty punishment. Mason will bring it down. About 400, 500 points already. In the mid lane, still very even, but Abed's level 6 coming soon. Might see them go for a kill there once he has it. As 4F continues to duel with Envy. Not winning that war, that's for sure, with the kill already picked up. Bulba has to come in, lend the assist. Doesn't seem like they have a kill opportunity on the Arc Warden. A lot of movement here. This first nighttime's been reasonably effective so far. Gets the first blood, puts pressure on mid, now grabbing bounty runes. I mean, it, it kind of is the Cloud9 story for me in this new iteration of Cloud9. A lot of the old faces let me, but nowadays, like, when they had success, it was Owie on his tree, it was Owie on his Enchantress, and now it's Owie on the Night Stalker. Yep. Although, we're going to see a little bit of engagement up top here. Dubu reveals his smoke gank. Looks like Envy was in uh, too difficult of a position. They're also to go diving down. bottom. They want Mr. Mason. They are going to find him. Crush comes out. Silence is available, I believe, though the mana a bit lacking. He has it. Mason still running away. Very tanky. Has the Quelly Blade. The Jukes come out. Boba's going to join the party. They uh -oh. got to kill him off soon. This Terra Blade is not level 6, fortunately, but Owie's almost dead. And MSS 
finally will bring him down. Now tanking tower shots on the retreat. A sliver of HP, but he does make it away. And the shrine, I believe, available. Four heroes heading towards that shrine. All nine are going to get value. Man, that 12 base armor plus the, the bonus armor that the tower gives him, he just stood there and took a ton of that disable and right clicks. And no problem. Cloud9, though. Does eventually get the kill, and like you said, no level six. I, I think if had he had the level six, that kill was impossible. Yeah, they probably would not have even gone for it. So yep. very important that they chose the timing they did. Though we say that, and Envy is often known for not even taking Sunder until level nine or ten. Yeah, so. most players don't want to, but you know, some some players hold a skill point, and then you know they see the gank coming, and then they do take it. Highlight die now. He's looking to move in, but Bulba is right there on his tail, chasing out the vampire late. Man, still though, gets onto the Queen of Pain, will bring him down. Envy joining the fray here as he brings in the Tempest double. Huh, very interesting timing for the Arc Ward in the port mid. I guess they were expecting Queen to make a play or something, but normally if you want to port mid with Arc Warden, you make a summon and then you use your summon to port mid instead. But either way, he, he did his job and got the kill. And now, Forev is going to stand next to these camp and, and blink away, or rather leap away. Yeah, it doesn't seem like anyone's really able to lane too effectively against Envy right now. Oh, I worked in just to force a TBM. All right. Yeah, yeah, that is the power of this hero. I'm not, I'm not feeling the offlane Marana right now for DC. I think that's really the area where this slide feels underwhelming is she's not winning the lane. Mm -hmm. They haven't been able to make good use of the arrow for kills as of yet. Uh, and obviously, she's going to need more farm than something like, you know, a traditional offlaner would. Yeah. I think it's a byproduct of the fact that Marana isn't a good laner on her own, and also you're laning against some of the, the strongest laners in the whole game, the Arc Warden. So, Arc Warden does do what uh, the, the thing I, I mentioned you, you summon your illusion, you port it mid, and you just defend buildings, and you just farm. Just keep farming. Get that Midas. Um, you don't have to tell Envy twice. He's got the recipe, the gloves already queued up. But DC are gonna sweep towards bottom now. Bringing in Dubu and Forev. No dire vision of this. It is daytime. No points of darkness. Could be an opening on MSS, and he's even being dragged in a bit too deep, but reinforcements are on the way. The Death Prophet's coming in. They go for the signs. He gets the two hero crush. Still the Star Storm, though, afflicting him. And oh, now the arrow. arrow. Beautiful snipe by Foreb. Quick and decisive. Gets the kill and ensures that Fada can't turn it around. Curious play by MSS. He could have just, like, walked back to his building, but instead went for a 2-3 man crush and then tries to juke. Um, definitely the... The riskier play, and unfortunately, it did not pay off for him. This I love that no hesitation. Like, I feel like too many Maranas I see, you know, they want to be like, eh, he's going to juke this way, he's going to juke that way, and then they hold it so long, and then they throw it, and it's just a, miss, an yeah. easy miss. I mean, even had he missed the arrow there, the fact that it provided vision through the trees might have been enough just to get off the, the one or two physical attacks. But it's, all, it's style points. Style points. You're all about the style points. I am. You can appreciate it. You gotta hit the arrows, you know? So he does take that early point in Sunder. Mason uh, certainly expecting some aggression. As DC make their first official smoke and a timely arcane rune gets bought off. However, there is a dire ward which I believe saw that arcane rune being picked up. Um, I could I didn't check whose pings those were, but yep. it seems MV's like Cloud9 might well know that this is happening. Envy Spider Sense is online and the crucial time to kill the Arc Warden, right before the yep. Midas comes out. But but this is what Arc Warden does, right? You expect a gank coming, you just like unload spark rapes in the whole freaking lane. And then what they what they smoke gank you just you run past all of them or Oh, they're gonna arrow down the catapult, scream up the wave, and then they do look for the dive. Envy already retreating. Yeah, he's High out. likely to go down here as well. Tanks the stun. And goes for the TP out, and is there any way to cancel no, this? Not. The arrow was already used, so see you later. Space created. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Dubu in trouble. The silencer will fall. Cloud9 grabbing a crucial kill, and while that's happening, they're also assaulting mid with the exorcism. It's a three-pronged victory for them. They get the kill bottom, they dodge the gank top, and they will take the tower mid. Maybe. The teleportations are coming in. It's nighttime, and you can't fight into this exorcism, but maybe they'll fight after or as it ends, they Moonlight Shadow, they chase forward. C9 are out of there. Yes, they are. They did lose the tier 1 top as well, like you mentioned, to Mason's Metamorphosis, but the meta ends, so he has to back off. Meanwhile, now Cloud9 with the Siege unit on the bottom side, they are going to push this tower as well. If they give this tower up, that is Envy's Midas. Yes. Doesn't seem like there's any defense happening. Yeah, it, it's hard to defend towers against Arc Warden because 
again, he pushes with Spark Wraith, and then you come in, you're going to eat two Spark Wraith and die. So knowing that, I, I think DC needs to either be there before the Arc Warden gets there, or teleports to the, you know, the... The, the the towers behind it and then walk there and so sit. they so they do have their global their global now Lumi but an issue with their draft that we talked about a little bit I want to expand on it now they don't have great initiation unless Bulba gets farmed Bulba yep. is nowhere near a blink dagger meanwhile for Cloud Nine they have the vision advantage of the Night Stalker as well as just the Arc Warden map control of Spark Wraith then you also have the Slardar blink already complete because they devoted their offlane to a proper initiator obviously Moonlight Shadow is okay but. It ain't no Blink Dagger on a Slardar, so Cloud9 are going to look to take advantage of that as they cluster up bottom. The Blink Reveal is coming. I mean, that's why Cloud9 banned the Batrider as the last phase, right? Like, I think there are other substitutes for the Batrider. Think of things like Centaur, think of things like Clockwork. This Marana, unless he hits an arrow, and so far he's only hit one. I, I, I don't I don't know what this hero is about. Oh, speaking of Spidey Senses, Dubu on point. Correctly identifies Cloud9 have invaded the jungle. It is nighttime. At least for now, is going to play it safe. Probably rotate towards top. We'll be grabbing that early medallion for the team. Something they do need. DC not the best Roche lineup but compared to Cloud9, who are fantastic. And the money scan will confirm what they already suspected. C9 are lurking in the Radiant Woods. But hey, Envy's fine with that. He's got his Midas up. Yep. Tempest double is going to be spammed on cooldown now, and the gold will accelerate. By quite a bit as well. I, again, hard to defend against uh, the Cloud9 Arc Warden push. And I think that the best thing that DC could do right now is forget about defending towers. Just push some of your own. You know, you have Terror Blade. You are a fine pushing lineup. Metamorphosis is available. So if he wants to slam this tier 2, he can. But here comes a rotation of Cloud9. They want to fight this. They want to defend these towers. Mason already suspecting he might be under pressure. Bulba's there, looking to reveal any sort of smoke, and he will do so. He's level 6. And now Vendetta tries to retreat. They drop down the sentry, but Bulba gets out of range. Don't see any dust on the team, oh. so two sentries committed. He's into the trees. The Moonlight Shadow gets them out of there, and now they might be able to make a move on Envy, but He's Envy is already yeah. recognized. As soon as that gank is executed, I cannot be sitting bottom. They used four sentries. Are you seeing this? One, two, three, four. Oh, bubble walk into one, but the rest of the team already gone. Yeah, I, I think that's Cloud9 just getting a little bit careless, not bringing dust. You're up against Marana, you're up against Nyx. You need detect. I mean, well, they had detection, just not the right type, I guess. Showing the great Bulbina the respect he deserves. <laughs> Where some Nyx is, your average run of the mill vanilla Nyx might get only one, two centuries. Bulba gets the quad, the quad century treatment. You know, a lot of these uh, players are friends. I'm sure there's going to be uh, friendly words exchanged before and after the there game. There is nothing friendly about this game. Cloud9 is literally fighting for their 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 team survival. They they get knocked out here in the group stage, Lumi. There's a disband coming. <laughs> is there? Actually, maybe not with the, maybe new, not. the new system. Yeah. You know, you don't have to wait four months for the, the next event. But I, I mean, come on. It's more fun that way. Disband incoming. <laughs> more fun Him to talk it. about disbands, man. Dude, that's that's the next great, you know, uh, thing in, in Dota after actual TI is the post TI. Uh, the TI disband drama. Disband Arena. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Who's gonna disband first? Oh, Cloud Nine. Ooh, Arrow's gonna come through. The crush is gonna be there as well. But Dubu, is gonna is he gonna pop a global for his ally or is he gonna get run down? No, neither. He's gonna just run towards his team and he will be fine. Tier one mid goes down to Mason. Big victory there. They get the tower. They don't blow the global, and they get the kill, and they do it all during nighttime. Yes, good stuff. Although we are getting to a decent amount of go here, Eternal Envy. How do you feel? About, I haven't actually seen too much terribly lately. Is the Mask of Madness the standard build nowadays? Um, it seems like Mask of Madness is just the standard build on any any like right click. Yeah, carry essentially. Yeah, and you know honestly, he's one of those heroes that will get suffer less for the minus armor because his armor is so high. But you're up against Slardar and Dazzle. Is I mean, it, every piece of armor counts, right? I guess, and and that goes to the fact that it also silences you, so you can't sunder. But you know, Mason's gonna choose to use it in a point where he's not getting chain sunder. Right? Does this necessitate like an earlier BKB pickup or something? I think Manta will be fine, or right? Manta. Yeah, and he's gonna get Manta anyway. So. It, it's just such a good farming item. Value. Yeah. Two E's. Wrong team. Wrong team. But he's in the game. His aura pervades all. 
Still haven't taken that bottom tower. Normally you will see the Terror Blades lane gets pushed in earlier. But... Obviously, it's not been the case. Good job by Cloud9 to defend that. So we'll we'll take stock of the game, and I think, Lumi, now is the time. Let's talk about larger game plan for both teams. Sure. DC might try to make a gank here on the Night Stalker. But. I think for Team DC, you use your big cooldowns, your your globals, your metamorphosis, and your sonic wave, and use them all in conjunction and take objectives, right? It's so easy to win a team fight with sonic wave and global, and then you pop the meta and you just hit one or even two towers. They could even consider taking Roshan after a one fight in, in such a manner. And for Cloud9, I think they're better suited to avoid the fights right now. I don't think they're itemized to fight against the global at the moment. And there is so much room for the Arc Warden to grow. Yeah, you, you run some random ganks with the nice Stalker, you use that vision advantage, you use the MSS Blink to get a pickoff or two. And maybe you take fights when those big ultimates are on cooldown. But I think the, the major game plan for Cloud9 is you just avoid fights, get what you can out of the map, and then you know take better fights later on. This lineup is designed to win the late game, in my opinion. Cloud9? Yes. Okay. And then I think DC just, you know, take objective whenever their ults are ready and just, you know, add money to their to the wallets. Boba finds an opening here, but MSS senses the gank. Pi also TP away just in the nick of time. So Cloud9 continue to also do a good job at dodging these rotations. As DC spend probably a minute of the team's total time going for that play while all the while Envy happily farming away with his Midas. Now the Maelstrom picked up, so efficiency, the name of the game for him now. And the farm continues to accelerate, but nonetheless, Macy keeping pace quite nicely with his Mask Madness and the early tower pressure. We gotta keep in mind that if DC doesn't take towers now, as the Magnetic Field just got leveled up, towers is gonna be hard to come by once you have level four Magnetic Fields where Arc Warden could make an illusion and then use the illusion's magnetic field and then use a real hero's magnetic field and then suddenly that tower siege, that, that precious metamorphosis time is just going to get wasted. Oh, Mason pounds through this tower in the top lane, so only three outer towers remaining. Meanwhile, for Cloud9, they're about to bring it down to just two remaining as this tier two will drop. Yep. So the tower advantage going their way. Which obviously, with a Death Prophet, not a huge surprise. Still though, when it comes to Roshan, both teams have their mid-tier 2s up. Both teams have their Shrines up. So that potential Rosh could be hotly contested. Yeah. One of the... I do apologize if I'm talking too much about Arc Warden, because I, I think he adds a very interesting wrinkle in, in how this game goes, particularly around the Roshan pit. One of his greatest advantage is the cast range of Spark Rave. If you want to hover over how far that thing is, he could easily just spam a couple of them into the pit. And you already mentioned how DC is perhaps not the best at taking Roshan. They will get scouted very easily by Envy. Yeah, you well. can't actually even see the circle until you zoom all the you way out. You have to zoom out <laughs> to see the circle. It's crazy how big that range is. Oh, that's very illuminating. So Cloud9, though, as Darkness Falls. They're going in. Okay. Think about the Roshan with the double damage rune here. They might be able to just take it. Camp will come out. Abbott, though, he's They're saving it for Envy. Who marches in. The weave committed, but the split push is there, Abed. Not the best one to actually take these structures down. But it's good at shoving in those waves. Doesn't matter. Roshan, see you later. By the time DC wake up, he's already done. Fada will be the one to grab the Aegis. Envy with the BOTs now, so. You know, kind of like the timing when Anaga gets her Radiance and Boots of Travel. Now, Envy can truly be everywhere, as can his Tempest doubles. Yep. And then this this is where we move into a stage of the game where DC needs to really take care of the Creep Wave. It is so easy for Arc Warden just to send an illusion to you know, your tier 3s, and then you're, you're, in a, you're in an interesting position. Are you going to just let him hit your tier 3? Do you send a hero to back to defend? They see, they see the crop as well. Uh -oh. On Abed, they're going to silence him off, but now he does. Yules tries oh. to get away. Oh, they're going to lock him down, cage him up, finish him off. Big pick off there. Abed, rarely is he a liability for the team or someone who gets picked off like that on his own, but rare punishment opportunity. Yep. C9 getting a crucial kill. So I haven't gotten the chance to watch a lot of Cloud9 games, but judging from their performance this game, I'm surprised to see them in, in such a terrible spot in the tournament. Maybe they're just playing better today, but like, you know, this is 
Good game plan, well executed. I yeah. It, what it, seems to be the matter? It feels to me like they had a good, you know, productive talk yesterday or the stanking. Uh, yeah, yeah, like a come to Jesus type moment. You know, yeah. something that really got them calmed down and situated. Also, perhaps they feel more comfortable playing against DC. That's for sure. A yeah. team that they know extremely well. But yeah, this this does not feel like a team that should have two wins to their name. Not mm -hmm. the way they're playing right now. But here they are. They'll have they to go. find a way yep. to put it together. It is a slow game, but that goes back to the game plan of both teams. I think DC, they want to take a team fight. They want to take kills, but it's Cloud9 avoiding them. Back in the mid lane here, they see Abed. Blink Crush will miss by MSS, but driving the fear into Abed. Abed just hasn't really been a force this game, Lumi. Like, he, he didn't win his lane convincingly mid. He's died twice. He's basically just been farming. It's just not a very Abed-esque performance. Yeah. What? I feel like a lot of it is there's no one to go and set up those kills for him. It's just the Knicks who only now completes his blink. Cloud Nine's on your high ground. They got the weave set up. They got the uh, exorcism going. DC are coming in. They're looking for the full rope a dope flank here as they wrap around. This could be the big fight that opens up the game. Now C9 getting cold feet. They want to back out, but already DC are there, ready to initiate. Bobo blinks Ooh. in, but blinking out at the right time is MSS, and now Mojo storms down away to safety. Fauna, meanwhile, chasing forward. The Exorcism's gonna end soon. The Carapace comes through. The Ghosts are still going, and Bulba gets cleaned up on the side of the fight. Dubu's next. Not a good initiation at all, and now on to the next. Bash on 4F. Amp comes through. Envy chunking him down. Clean picks for Cloud9 and looking for more. They're going to set up shop on Abed, who barely blinks away. They didn't As even... the ult ready, they didn't get a kill. Yeah, they even lose the Aegis on Fata, who got focused by so many things. Envy going to come in. Mason looking for the ult. He does pop it off, and Envy will take a big chunk of damage, but he doesn't care. Cloud9 will open the Tier 3. They not may not be able to get the racks off of this, but I think they will be happy backing off the Tier 3 and then taking the Shrines. Awkward initiation from DC. Pretty late on the global there. Bulba was indecisive on his jump, and that's all they really have. They weren't able to throw in an arrow to start the fight. Like, there was no obvious way in. Yeah, you say awkward initiation. Again, it, the point that you've been hammering all of this time is the fact that they just don't have good initiation. You're relying on the Nyx. Nyx has a vendetta in, and I don't think he even got his intended target. Great play by MSS, just blinking away from the Nyx assassin. Now, Cloud9 cannot get careless. They just got a big lead. Just hold back. You know, wait for like night time. They might lose Owie here. Bulba is on the chase, but coming in for support is Cloud9. The arrow comes through, it'll connect, but the whiff on the stun forces Bulba on his heels, and now MSS wants to chase, wants to punish. They're gonna crack those bongos open and beat a hasty retreat towards the base, except Abed says, we could take this fight. Oh, maybe not. Now the Yule Scepter coming through for Ev. Oh. Likely to be sacrificed. Coming in from the side. Bulba with the big stun. Nobody's dead yet, though. Owie gets scraped up. Staying alive through it all. Dubu forced on his heels. Mason now going to metamorph and get aggressive. Fata out in front. But he's doing too much damage. Mason can't stand against him. Crushed and finished off. Mason will fall. Did not have the Sunder. Or at least wasn't able to get it off in time there. I think it just cooled down. Now Cloud9 racing forward into the base. C9 continues somehow to scrap out these fights. First kill of those last two skirmishes for DC. Only now do they collect the measly Slardar kill. That's just Cloud9 flexing. I mean, that wasn't even a good fight for Cloud9. It wasn't really organized the way they wanted. That was without exorcism also. Without exorcism, without nighttime. Like, on paper, that's just a bad fight that Cloud9 chose to take. But they are so far ahead. They had Aegis still, so like, eh, why not? Honestly, as a Cloud9 fan, I'd like to see them just to like, you know, back it up a little bit. You know, they're, they're, they're at a 10. I, I need them to be at 8. You know, that wasn't really a, a smart fight, but regardless. Like, a little too emotional yeah. in, the, in the way that they're playing. They're, they're winning, and it's okay to take those type of fights. But now it's like, again time to uh, slow down. Envy uh, I think it's, a, it's probably a good time to talk about the playoff picture really quickly for sure, those sure, who sure. might not know uh, and are curious. So if Cloud9 win this game, they will have three wins. Uh, and then no matter what happens in the next game, uh, they will control their destiny going into the last series. So Yeah, they don't need like Hellraiser to lose yeah. out or stuff like that. Yeah, so if Hellraiser is, you know, goes 0-2 in their next series, then Cloud9 can go 0-2 against Hellraiser's and they'll still get a tiebreaker match. Right. Uh, and the way Hellraiser's is playing, that's not entirely unlikely either. So, you know, a 2-0 for Cloud9 pretty much assures them that 
Uh, they will be moving on. Uh, very unlikely. Even if Hellraiser is 2 0 them, they'll also have to get wins in the other games. So these games are crucial, but ultimately not decisive. They can also have a bad showing here. Somehow DC come back and they'll still have their fates in their hand. Sure. Round out the day and it'll be that final matchup between Hellraisers and C9 that decides who is eliminated. I do want to spend a second talking about uh, Arc Warden's item choice. He's going hood into pipe. And normally when you think of Arc Warden, you think of, you know, the prototypical carry hero. But I wasn't kidding when I said Arc Warden is a hero that you could pretty much, pretty much buy any single item in the game. And the fact that Pipe now stacks upon each other, you can just double Pipe, double pipe. against Ooh. DC. It's just ugly. Now, they're not that mad. The thing is, it's it's a good item. Obviously, the synergy is there with the Tempest double, but it'd be like there's better games for it. You know? Sure, like, this is not the best. They don't that much nuke damage. Yeah. I mean, it basically takes out the Nyx and the Quab's nuke damage. But I'm imagining a game where there's like a Zeus, an Ancient Apparition or something, and then this is like, oh, godly yeah. item. But it's just, I, I would say it's just solid right now. It does mitigate a lot of uh, the Queen of Pain with the Shivas and now I mean, the even the, the curse coming out from uh, Dubu, you know? Like, it's basically all the small damage coming out. And Cloud9 will set up shop. They don't even need to commit their Exorcism, just a magnetic field. MV is gonna start, you know, spamming spark rays everywhere, and it just makes initiation. <laughs> Look at this push! Like, <laughs> just makes it so obnoxious to fight, like, into C9. Once they get, it's kind of like when a shaman gets to a tower and he right. just drops the wards. You know, the Veno sets up. Like, once they kind of get momentum on the push, it's they're so entrenched, and it's really annoying to fight into it. Cloud9 will begin removing the shrine. They can wait for the next Roche if they want. I mean, you're a nice stalker. You got the vision advantage. And it's, the onus is really up to Digital Chaos to, to make something happen. Moonlight Shadow. DC, meanwhile, really needed a win here. They want to finish this day with three, ideally four wins. Then they'd be at nine or ten and have a decent shot at upper bracket. But oh. here comes the big fight. Bulba starts it up. Quad Bolt's there. Global comes through. Good connection from the team as well. Now they're looking for this follow-up kill in the Death Prophet. Can they burst him down? They will. Three have fallen. DC. That's the fight that they need. A timely global with a big Bulba stun with Abed over the top for the damage. That's how they're going to come back. Yeah, quickly Cloud9 pings out. They are standing under a high ground ward. There's no way Bulba would blink in like that blind and hit a two-man impale. And you were mentioning, this is the really for Digital Chaos is initiating the fights. They've got one and now they just go, go, go. Tier one, tier two. And suddenly Cloud9, who was fairly ahead, now is facing some great, great pressure. DC not out of it yet. They're working on the tier two bottom. The tier two mid still standing, but map control will be forfeited after this blunder. Roche is up. Not something that DC are really in position to take at the moment, but already the TP's come back. You can see lines being drawn on the map. They know that Roche will be the site of the next contest and they want to be ready. So a big win here for DC and a step back into the game, but still more work to be done. Yeah. I feel like this is the type of game where um, the standard Night Stalker build nowadays, which is getting a solo crest, getting, let's say, a disarm, perhaps might be not as good as the traditional build, which is getting the Aghanim Scepter. I feel like more than anything, this game is about vision, about initiation. They Cloud see our bed. They want, to, they want to fight right now before that global cools down. Can they catch out the Queen of Pain? Blinks oh. out. Abed's away for the time being. Now he wants to pursue. Pipe has been activated, but Boba comes in. Oh, Carapace, but C9 cutting him out. They get the amp damage on him. They're going to chew through that Nyx. He does throw out the stun, gets two, but pays with his life to bail out Abed. Now they might Dubu. lose Dubu as well. Yeah, and Arrow's not going to hit on anything. They will chase down Dubu, and I think with two dead, no buyback on either of these heroes. Easy for Cloud9 to at least begin a siege on the Tier oh. 3. Or rather, just a straight up Rax. They could just go for Roche and it would be free, but they, they got want exorcism. the Rax. Yeah, they want the Rax. This is easy. In fact, they might get more than two. Glyph is available for the Radiance. Fada's not slow. using his ult. What, what's going on? They slow this down, probably saving it for the Roche. At least for now, but it's slow going with the Glyph committed. They're focused on the range. The Glyph ends. The ranged will fall. Now turning back for the melee. C9. Critical damage done to the structures of DC. They are clumping very hard for that Nyx Impale. Gotta watch out for that in the future. And Global is also up. They still want to go back and fight right in the base. C9, <laughs> relax. There's a Roche to be claimed. All right, they're going to run mid. Hoping for a Wayward Soul to just overextend. Yeah. 
Yeah, it looks like we are going to calm down a little bit, push out the waves, and, you know, go back for the Roche, like you mentioned. Ufata has Octarine fi finished. Jeez Louise, he is farmed. I thought for sure he's going to finish that Shiva's guard, given how important armor is against Terrorblade, but he hasn't really died much, so can't argue against that. I think DC are correct to identify now. If they give up the Roche after losing that one lane, they're probably losing their second, and then yep. comeback becomes... Well, we've seen two Mega Creep comebacks this tournament. I don't think this lineup is really Aoi the best to do it. needs to pop that darkness. Abed walks in. Do they, they have a sentry on him. They yeah. know he's coming in. They just scouted him. And, and just look at the, the shop that Envy has set up. Spark Wraith inside the pit, so no Roshan sneaks. They have Spark Wraiths absolutely everywhere in the area that they care about controlling. And then they're going to just wait. They can wait for nighttime. And now Envy sends an Illusion mid. What do you do as DC? Do you poke into Roche? Do you defend against this Envy uh, Illusion? Or do you sit back and do nothing? None of these are winning choices. And they don't really have the best creep clear. Queen of Pain is okay. Terror Blade's not great. And obviously, a Marana who's gone for a Defusal Blade and a Drums is mediocre. And Silencer gem. doesn't bring much to the table, so nobody's really good at shoving out these lanes, which is, when you're down a lane of Rax, generally an essential component of the comeback so that you can make those forays outside the base without it being too obvious. Instead, bottom lane being shoved in, there's just a single TB illusion to try and deal with this. Cloud9 are fine to just sit back and wait, Yeah. but DC, the specter of Oroshan, haunts them. They just can't give it up for free. Cloud9 might be slightly afraid right now. They don't have eyes on Roche, whether it's being done or not. And, you know, bot's pushing in, so they know something sneaky is very is going on. Abed shows himself bottom, so... Cloud9 breathes a sign of relief. And, again, the same game plan for Cloud9. Wait for nighttime, get Aegis, close out the game. C9 hanging back, but as you said, always vigilant. Forever keeping eyes on that pit. You see, still sticking around. They send Abed now to push up bottom. Let's have about 3,000 gold. I guess while well, we have a moment, Lumi, any items that you see DC could pick up which might change this game? I think I'd like to see some sort of uh, Maelstrom coming out from the Marana. You talked about needing some sort of D-push. He's working towards BKB, and that is important. I guess it just comes down to what kind of... How do they think they could win the game? Whether or Ev, it's almost fight. caught out here. Dust cracks through on the run. The Void connects, but still, if they chase him too far, they could get punished. The Fusal Blade now, and they set up for the stun. It only hits on the Night Stalker, but they focused on Owie. They will finish him off. While that was happening, Mason came in for the side with a double damage. He also brought down the Dazzle, the DD of Dreams for DC as they look for Fada too. They pound him through, and they get the kill. Three fall, exorcism blown. A critical blunder by C9, and now they want the fourth. The Blake forward from Abed. Sensing blood in the water, but he doesn't have the vision just yet. The gem is coming from the rear for Ev actually back at the base. Can they take this Roshan time? The double damage is up. About a quarter of the duration remains. It might just be enough. Look how fast Mason is bringing this Roche down. Unless he gets chain bashed, they might be able to take it, but Envy's there to the rescue with the Tempest double looking to prevent this <laughs> That is Roshan an illusion. Take. Zoning out four heroes by himself inside the Roshan pit. I guess they're afraid of a slaughter coming in with the crush and making things a little bit ugly, but... So wait. now if you're Cloud9, you know Global's down, you know Quapult is down, yep. you know Metamorph's been committed. But you also don't have Exorcism. But so. you don't have Exorcism. You would really just want to go Roche, but I don't know if you can. Well, I mean, honestly, did you see the way that they pushed that bottom racks without Exorcism? I think with Double Magnetic Field, they could probably just take it down with the uh, Corrosive Haze, right, from Slaughter? It's more that if a fight does break out, then you don't have Exorcism to take the fight. So Cloud9 got a Think about, you know, the, the risks versus benefits. Do you just go in without Exorcism should a fight break out? Or seems like that is uh, the choice that they make. MOBA, though, lurking. Dire scan reveals on the high ground. Dubu. Do they want to go in? He's busy doing a bit of dewarding. MSS getting cold feet. A time is being bought for both squads. Fada 50 seconds off his ult, but the global's going to be ready sooner. There'll actually be a window here, because he, he never completed that Octarine. He ended up going into a Shiva's first. One of the plus armor versus the Terror Blade. But that means a long time to wait if that exorcism is committed erroneously. You know, one of the items that I think Envy could have considered getting, maybe instead of the double pipe that, you know, looks a little bit sweet, but like you said, perhaps not the best game for it, it's perhaps Necrobook. You know, like, there's Marana on the other side, there's a Nyx Assassin. That used to be the old, like, Basically, you get Midas, you go straight Necro 3 with right. OTs. Like, that used to be the old 
you can't ideal arc warden build before the rapier cheese was discovered and right patched out eventually. You still can't do the the necrobook cheese. Be the the cheese is that you know uh, every time you summon in a new tempest double, they would have necro on cooldown. Like then you just have necro every thirty seconds or whatever. But still, you basically just don't even think about it like that. Think about it, you just have two sets of necro books, at, at, you know whenever you need and. That's just huge against this kind of. Lineup. It is a lot of gold you're potentially feeding. It's enemy. about the pipe, right? The like, enemy team. It, the same goal as the pipe. No, but I'm saying you're feeding oh, a lot okay. to the enemy team potentially. I mean, then it, it makes it easier for Pi and an Aoi to not buy wars like like what they're doing right now. Boba does catch out Aoi here, gets off that initial stun, but do they have the follow up? Would have liked to see an arrow there, but 4F had already thrown it out elsewhere. Not available for the chain stun. So the delicate dance around the pit continues, but C9. Back to the safe confines of their high grounds. We'll wait. I'm still somewhat surprised that they lost a previous team fight that led to DC poking into the Roche. DD rune on Terrorblade was huge there. Yeah. I guess MSS was unable to get off a good initiate because it was nighttime. It was Aoi in the front giving them all division. The um, but somehow DC got the better jump, which I just found surprising. You look at the two drafts, and certainly you would expect Cloud9 should have vision supremacy with Night Stalker, with amp damage, uh, and even you know with the with spark the Arc Warden, and the yeah. Spark Race. Like they should have the map control edge for sure, but it just hasn't really been the case. They also did get Aoi's gem. Uh, I don't know if we touched on that. Okay. So I'm not sure if Cloud9 have thought about buying a new one, or if they even can right now. But that will help mitigate what should be a vision edge for them. Not seeing anything right now. So Envy's next item. He's gonna go butterfly. Thoughts on that? No counter in sight, right? Like, he's got the pipe. He's got, in fact, the double pipe. So a lot of the magic damage gets mit mitigated. Physical damage is gonna be an issue as well. Um, Mason nowhere near any type of like true strike or stuff like that. So, yeah, good item choice. Abed closing in on the fabled level 25 for the Queen of Pain. Creeps continue to march in. They're trying to bait this. You see, acting like the Queen of Pain is just there farming, but C9 again, scared. They're the team with the most to lose here. DC, an upper bracket berth would be sweet, but they know they're going to the main event. Cloud9, even that is not a certain thing. Yep. So you can just feel it in their play right now. They're, they've lost a few fights. They're barely ahead. They're very tentative. They're reluctant to commit. You know, instead of the butterfly that MV is working on, I wonder if some sort of utility item would be better. Think of something like Orchid into Bloodthorn, or even just a Hex. I mean, you can make an argument that Orchid will get dispelled by things like Mantisau, Yule Scepter on the Queen of Pain, but you got two of them, right? Because you got two heroes. Um, or even better, just Hex. You know, you can't Mant out of it, you can't Yules out of it. They're not building a Lotus Orb either. Exactly. So I, I just feel like you could get a lot of mileage out of those kind of utility items. But oh! Big, kick, big pick, but no one there to follow it up. We haven't seen those arrow connections m mount too much this game. I there Back in the day, Marana's hitting big arrows would often like open up the game, but DC will finally make their move, marching down mid, but they as they hit those sentries, they are revealed. Well, they feel strong enough to actually push. We're going to see what Arc Warden could do on the defense. DC are just, they're, they're feeling like they want to make a play. They're the ones pushing out. Cloud9 are the ones saying, come to us. We have the map control edge. Still not seeing those openings until oh, now. Yules. They catch out Bulba to start the fight. They get the silence off time just right. No ability to retreat. He gets his own Yules off, but the blink won't be there in time. The gem, gem gets thrown down. Already Envy scrambling to send that illusion towards top. Shove in the lane. He sees opportunity. Bulba with no buyback. This probably is the Roche. That was a very high risk, low reward play, in my opinion, by DC. I, I think they just feel like it's daytime and they just feel the pressure to do something. But jumping right in front of the tier two uh, and missing the stun was perhaps not the way to go. They're still going to look to contest. This oh. arrow comes in. Ward's being killed off. Dubu has the global, lobs in the curse. But the Roche is getting low. They're going to have to commit real soon if they want to take this fight. DC. If they hesitate and then try to run, they might end up forfeiting three kills here. 
You can see Abed waiting in the wings off to the side. The Moonlight Shadow committed. The arrow comes in again. It only hits the Roche this time. And now the TV Illusions marching forward. BKB available. Global committed. Now is the time to fight. But Fada gets off the Spirit Siphon. Standing in the front lines. The rest of the team staggering back. And on the other side of the fight, Boba has rejoined the party. 4F getting melted in the pit. Fada still healthy. Mason not doing the damage they need. He's lacking that big right click. But now with the help of the Medallion, he drops low. The Roche almost falling. The Queen of Pain holds there. Abed gets the kill with the ult and the ages. DC coming back, but still, Fada hangs on. He will pop it now into Owie. Cloud9 crumbling as they get run over. They might lose more on the way out. Envy's got a retreat. TP time for him. Pi and MSS scratching their heads. Oh, mamma mia. That was not the Roche fight that they were hoping for. That was a very indecisive Roche fight by Cloud9. Half the team wanted to finish Roshan, half the team wanted to say, let's take the fight. And what ended up happening was that the weave ended. Remember at the beginning half of the fight, you were saying, hey, that terror blade looks like it's not hitting that hard. It was the solo crest on the on the Death Prophet, but it was also it was weave ending. All of a sudden, like, the that armor and on the Fata, medallion. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Silencer. Or, or, yeah I think it was solo crest actually at that point. Or That's is it? No, just still, a medallion. Still just, medallion. Yeah, but basically he just lost like 25 armor in a drop of a hat. And all of a sudden that Terra Blade was hitting hard. Aegis and Cheese going to the side of Digital Chaos. And blunders after blunders from Cloud9. This is, you know, on, on paper, this is a game that they have all of the advantage. That a top tier team, one of the best teams in the world, should just win. But... Now They're the making it very hard on themselves. Now the Solar Crest picked up, so... Envy's ability to get damage out in these fights. Definitely a concern. No MKB for him. Yep. No Bloodthorn for him. A breath of fresh life for DC. Very scrappy squad here. You know, Bulba dies and... You feel like, oh, they might just have forfeited their chance to contest this Roche, but... Manages to get back into the engagement. I also think they're trying to min-max a little bit too hard. They started that Roche, remember, after killing uh, Boba, without exorcism. They're like, okay, you know, we got magnetic field, Boba's dead. Just, just exorcism, commit. take the Roche. Just commit. And you then go wait in your base for it to be exactly. ready again. Like, you know, there's no need to be too uh, efficient with a double E. And it, it just kind of feels like that's the case here. Try too hard for that and you end up with a double F yeah. of efficient. As your grade. Cloud9 now, smoking in, looking to take a fight. Perhaps could catch DC off guard. Abed dropping low here to that Envy Tempest double. Tower has fallen, tier two eradicated. Wasn't actually finished off fully earlier. And now they make their move. Mason shoving in, he's got the arcane rune, so it's a pretty low cooldown, I believe, on the metamorphosis. This next round of push, and they will commence their siege on the tier three. But Envy Magnetic making field. that hard. Yeah. Don't actually have to creeps either. Any urgency here for DC Lumi? I know initially when we discussed the draft, you were feeling like their lineup would start to trail off for DC late game. Um, they're trailing off right now, but I think you give it 10 to 20 more minutes and they'll surge right back. Um, the level 25 of Queen is coming. Marana is a core that will scale. Her item right now is pretty bad, but you know, again, you give it 10 to 20 more minutes, she's gonna have at least one or two more items. Um, and then hopefully Silencer by that time could work towards Refresh Orb. A double global is definitely a big thing in the late game. So I wouldn't count DC out completely in the late game. They, they do have some decent scalings. Yeah, and obviously with our in this hero farms incredibly quickly, but... You also reach your max quickly. He is a little bit like an anti-mage in that regard. Yeah. You know, where it feels like he gets his six items real fast, and then you start trying to figure out which ones to swap. Yep. So I guess on that note, are you the pipe, I suppose, is an obvious candidate for a swap here. I, I honestly have not felt the effectiveness. Felt the effect of the pipe. I, yeah. wish, I wish we could easily see stats on how much damage was blocked, but I imagine it's quite low. Almost all the damage in these fights is Mason on the Terror Blade. The Queen of Pain pure damage ult. Uh, like some mediocre nuke damage, but... It just doesn't feel like it's the best pipe game. Yeah. One of those things that look really good on paper. Um, I was nerding out when he first bought it. You know, talking about it, interested. But seeing it in, ac in action, it's just... How about this though? Hex. 
Yeah, that, that, is, that, a, that is a value yeah, art. Yeah, that's the one that I was like, you know, hey. That, I, that I love. Yeah. Great against the TB. The BKB is getting lower as well. It's down to eight seconds. Oh, he saw his Midas. Feels bad. Did he sell his Midas or did he backpack it? He just completely sold it. Really? Yeah. I mean, Hex is a potentially game-changing item, so... Uh, he basically wants to retain buyback and have the Hex, and that's the only way. He goes in the bottom side, and he just goes right onto the Tier 3. Trying to dodge that. Oh, Hex going for the kill straight up here. Not gonna get it. But you can see how disruptive MV could start to be. This yeah, is... with that Hex, he can threaten for solo kills. Yeah. So that is a big asset of the item. Yeah, and, and you know, we talked about how DC was able to win the fight, get the Aegis and stuff. Um, looks like the Aegis was just waited out, or did Abed use it somehow? I think it just kind of Yeah. I, I just think that Aegis overall is more important for DC to not let Cloud9 get it than to have it themselves. Because I don't think they could really effectively use uh, the Aegis. Basically, all of these fights happens when Cloud9 wants to happen. They have all the control when it comes to vision. They have all the control when it comes to where the creep waves ends up to be. Boba moving in under cover of Vendetta for Pi, but Pi is already safely ensconced in the trees. He'll TP out back to safety and another gem grab. Owie recognizing that he might be a little poor, but this vision is oh so crucial for Cloud9. Yeah, I don't think he's gotten a single item in the past 20 minutes, I want to say. That solo quest, or sorry, not solo quest, uh, Jesus. <laughs> Use your words, Lumi. This arm, <laughs> that item, Heaven's Outbreak, there we go, I figured it out. Um, he's been working for that for the last 25 minutes, and he's got you know, overflow. Well, hang on to your hats, folks. We've had some long ones this TI group stage, and this is feeling like it could be another. And if any team knows how to entertain their fans going into the ultra late game, it is certainly Jackie Mao and the boys. I don't know if entertain is the word I would use. I think it is. Uh, it's entertaining. <laughs> it's just also heart-wrenching. Yes. Painfully entertaining. Yeah. I guess uh, that is the case. Radiant scan will hit pay dirt. Finding some up the hill, and they're going to make their move, but the spark faith is there. Bulbas quick on the jump. He finds Pi to start the fight. Now the global comes through. Can they focus anybody down? Abed trying to lock down that Dazzle. We'll get the pick, and now turning back for Envy. This would be a huge takedown, and the Arc Warden is going to fall. That's two out of the picture, and now the tower descended upon. Envy will have he the buyback. He needs buy to buyback right now. 80 seconds on the yeah. sidelines. He has no choice, but he does it without a Dazzle. Just like this, Cloud9, all of a sudden, Terror Blades in your base. Big, bad Mason getting to work, and the arrow comes through, connects on Fana. Do they want to commit? They want objectives. They want to keep their eyes focused on the big picture here, but the Hex comes through. Can they burst Mason down? Sunder's still at the ready. BKB still available. Abed into the front. He gets off the quad bolt. He tanks up as best he can. Now they all step up to the party. They want to deal with that Envy illusion, but now with the BKB expended, the Metamorph trailing low. They may have to back away. DC, knowing that Envy is bought back, all they need to do is get out of here safely. They don't have to overcommit to this fight, but Mason has been forced into it. Crush comes through now. Bulba jumps into the Crush. He didn't get off the Carapace, so then he dies. A triple for Envy on the buyback. Cloud9 salvaging this game. At least for now, they still Maybe retain more. the tier 3 and they want Dubu too. It's an ultra for Envy. Buyback, worth it. Now, buybacks are available on three of those four DC heroes, but, but they no will meta. not have a global. They will not have a metamorph for about a minute. Yeah, I think Cloud9 is going to force those buybacks. They might even think about taking a fight. They also have Exorcism available. Octarine Core is available on the Death Prophet. So I think they can actually press the issue, and I think they could actually win the fight on the high ground. Here comes Cloud9. So the question, Lumi, does Terrorblade buyback, or do you just give up the second lane? I think you give up the second lane, because the buyback doesn't do anything. He might have to buy back here, though, as his Queen of Pain gets initiated on the Hex is doing so much. Cannot best survive. He eats the cheese after Hex. Fata now getting focused. Fata activating the BKB. He has a Grave on him. He's looking at TP out any stuns available. No, Vata makes it out. Looks like they will lose Pi, but they got the tier claimed, three. But no racks yet, and Pi, as you mentioned, caught out. Abed gonna try and fish for more as his Yules is pulling down, but nobody in the neighborhood. So Envy no buyback now. Mason no buyback. I think DC used like two to three buybacks, in fact. Nope. Just oh no, also the Nyx. Nyx, no buyback. And uh yeah, terribly no buyback. So I do want to talk about how the, the fight broke Barocha's out. Barocha's up, Lumi. 
Roche is up and Exorcism is down. Oh, Envy going for the kill on Bulba. As you mentioned, no buyback on the Knicks. This illusion is doing <laughs> work. Yeah, he's just standing there and he's just like, yeah, get out there, of my Roche. Not pit. Illusion, a Tempest double. It's doing work. Sorry, I've been, I've been saying illusion. I've been saying clone. It, it's, it's all the same for his ultimate. Now they go back in again. Envy also very fearful. If he dies, the game is over for Cloud9. Roche is low. Will they contest? Now he wanting to move in, but without exorcism, it's risky Hit business. the arrow on MSS. Meanwhile, the catch is there, and MSS down. MSS no buyback for a minute. The Roche desperately low. Envy trying to push his illusions, and it looks like to try and steal this thing, but he won't get there in time. So the Aegis now claim. Mason gets that second crucial life, and be still unable to complete kills with these Tempest doubles. As cheeky as it is, the conversions aren't there. DC doing a good job at teamwork to avoid those pickoffs, and now they've got a minute, but Bottom lane's pushing in. Looks like they will be resetting. And now yep. Envy grabs that BKB. Okay, so finally we have some time to talk about the item choices. There there was a MKB during the fight uh, on, on Mason. And that was the reason why the the uh, Arc Warden felt like paper. Like, his magnetic field, which has been his big defense, does nothing. The butterfly evasion does nothing. So he walked in thinking that he could actually, you know, sit in the front and, and hit people. But what ended up happening, he just died in like four hits. And that's something that Envy needs to watch out for. They would really need that disarm finish on uh, Aoi, but like you've been mentioning, he's buying multiple gems, he's been struggling, he's been dying every single fight, and not having that Heaven's Halberg available to them is also hurting them quite a bit. DC pushing in the bottom lane here with Mason. Bulba rummaging around, under cover of Vendetta, hunting for that next pick as Abed shoves in the top lane, has of course since hit his level 25. And that is what we saw in that last fight, is he just jumped right into the magnetic field, threw out the Quapple, got the Scream and the Shivas off, and tanked everything Cloud9 yep. were dishing his way. So that allows him to kind of bodyguard Mason from the front, while Mason focuses on the structures. DC now, a fresh breath of air for them. A win here, they're 7-6, and six, a sweep of the day, they're 10-6. and six. I think at that point, very likely, they are upper bracket, so their yeah. destiny in their hands. C9. Same for them, but the opposite story. 54 minutes, and showing no signs of ending soon, but that could change now as Mason and the gang start to move in. They take over the dire jungle. They think about a push forward, getting down some wards. Do they dare breach the base? Anything they're waiting for? Anything delaying them in your mind? Maybe daytime? Just wait it out. Wait out the night, excuse me, and then uh, go for it again. I think uh, this is a very interesting point for Envy in terms of how he plays it. If he is really worried about defending the base, he never sends out the Tempest double because you need double Magnetic Field to protect the base. Uh, magnetic Field still works even against uh, the, the True Strike item on buildings because you can't grant True Strike to hit buildings. You can still miss against buildings. Um, magnetic Field still amazing for that. Not, not as useful, obviously, uh, for the heroes. Yeah, will Mesa want to commit his own hero? That's going to be the question. Yeah. He is getting to that point where slots are a problem. As you can see, quite a few big items backpacked up. Arrow comes through and Bulba gets the fight started. Now the global, they commit on Fauna. They'd love to bring him down early, but the BKB's there. The crush comes in from MSS. They're focusing for him down the Quapple with Abed leaping in, lunging forward. 10k MMR in your face, but not enough damage. Abed now gonna cheese up, try to stay alive a bit longer. He's taking the whole squad. Nobody else helping him. Where's the team? DC can't save their friend, and now Abed will fall. Three have dropped. Mason on the run, the teleport scroll cooling down. Oh, they see him, they C9. scan him. Are they fly. gonna be able to catch him out? Owie, fly. BKB, Mason cool, calm, and collected under pressure will get out. But they got nothing, Lumi. Didn't even scratch that tier three. MV now on the high ground on the other side of the map, pops a magnetic field, goes on the tier three. Not actually hitting all that often, and he will get his illusion killed, giving away quite a bit of gold. 180 Tempest up. a pop. Tempest double, thank you. Okay, so a couple of things happened in that last fight. Level 25 Queen and Pain, normally the game is just over. That is the ultimate trump card, but look at how much damage that is able to... He has AC, he has Shiva's guard, but Cloud9's damage output rivals that and even goes over that. When you have double Tempest, Tempest double hitting on, on the uh, co-op and, you know, he's getting uh, corrosive haze by the Slaughter, easy takedown. And be getting 
Double stunned up here, but space created. Mansa Dodge attempted as Mason looks to juke out MSS, and now Abed lunging in with the buyback. He's going to commit forward. He expects his team to follow his call. Mason also making the move, but they don't have anybody really locking heroes down during this time, and while that was happening, the rest of the squad was dealing with the Tempest double, which almost killed off the Tier 3, so they force out the Abed buyback. They get away safely. They have Exorcism up now. Global is going to be ready soon. We're basically at a full reset, except buybacks are a lacking. Only the Death Prophet buyback ready. The Arc Warden cooling down soon. Yeah. Not too far over the horizon as well will be the Terror Blade Extra Life, who now says, screw it, man, buys that Hurricane Pike. And I am feeling that, Lumi. Like, Mason just is not there with Abed in these fights. The mobility's lacking. It's a nice Metamorph on cooldown. Maybe even the late game refresher is something he'll have to think about. It's hard for him to get in because he doesn't have blink right now. Double force up on Envy takes down the tier three. Oh, this is the old speed gaming yeah. strats coming back here on the big stage. Flashback of uh, MLG Columbus, I believe it was just. Yes, sir. Quad four staff on the clinks. Yeah, the blinks. Oh man, they were they were cheesing it even harder back then. It, they did it with the Chen too, a send back, and then force four force that forward to get off like three hits on a building. Oh, the least delicious cheese. Unhealable damage. Yeah, that's the goal. It seems like armor is the name of the game. Both teams just getting these big armor items. AC Shiva's guard. I like this choice for Mace. I mentioned refresher. He has changed up his quick buy here. Uh huh. Uh, this is. Honestly, one of the best late game terror blade items. The double BKB, the double metamorph. I mean, Sunder is kind of hard to execute, but in theory, the double Sunder. Do you think he's going to take the Sunder cooldown at, at 25? Uh, I don't know, actually. This feels like that type of game, right? Because I don't think Cloud9 has any burst damage to kill that quickly. They do have the double Hexes, though. That, that might Cru make. Crush is such a low cooldown, though. That's the only. Like, yeah. I feel like so many times you'll just be crushed at the wrong time and or bashed, and then you don't get off the Sunder, and you feel real bad. I mean, is 15 stat that, that big of a deal at this point, you think? It, it feels like a drop in the bucket, given how the game's going. I, yeah, I, the Sunder is like the higher playmaking potential for sure. That's the, like, that, that is the much higher ceiling. I think the stats just have the... the Safer option. The, like, the, the higher floor. Yeah. You know, like, guaranteed to be useful. Sure. So, it's going to come down to preference. Top lane, Illusions coming in again. Envy just doing out. Uh, Tempest Double. Tempest Double. All right, moving forward, disclaimer, <laughs> when I say Illusion on Envy, it's Tempest Double. It's not Mantis Double or Illusion Roots. It's okay. Obviously, the important difference is that these things hit the buildings very hard. And they give uh, 180 gold yes. when they die. But Envy's fine feeding that gold away, as long as he's getting his too. There comes a point where the supports will be happy to collect those last hits and you know, get, get some extra items. On the Tempest Doubles? They be they be running away. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they collect anything. No, you, you, they follow Mason around farming them to get back in the game. Mason has to just like right click as hard as he can to kill it as fast as he can. He he's also worried. Got nine on the smoke now, making their push forward, tiptoeing towards the DC base. Bottom lane shoved in, but DC looks to contest. Mason confidently strutting around in front. He's got one illusion by his side. C nine. Get nervous. Back away. Slow and steady. Really a game that could go either way as we hit the one hour mark. Still a long time to go if we want to be the longest game at this here TI. But with the amount at stake, I don't expect a GG until the throne is actually about to die. It seems too hard to have a really long game with these two lineups. Because anytime a single team w wins the team fight, the buildings are just dropping like flies. <laughs> both teams have so much physical damage. Except they're both so halting and like passive that they're letting buybacks cool down, they're letting heroes farm the buybacks, they're letting the next Roche respawn, so like, definitely true that buildings will melt, but that's only if those carries don't instantly get back into play. DC in a very good spot to backstab, but Weave is just set up. Dude, Envy's walking into him! Envy, his main hero, committed out in front, but they actually get the jump here. Where's the counter initiation coming through? The silencer global, he hasn't got it off yet. He's silenced, he does it! The final moment at the buzzer, he manages to connect with the global, but Envy pushes himself away to the high ground. Mason being kited out a bit here. Envy ports Abed. to the base. Oh, Envy's out of the fight, and now the two heroes done. He's Bulma raxing, coming in he's close. raxing. Envy going for the red, but while it's happening, his team is getting absolutely buried. Rage Rex survives, now the chase is on. The Hex comes through, Envy with the micro, and now looking for the retreat. 
A critical piece oh, of damage he's done, to hide. but he's got no TP. Oh, he's hiding. They don't Do see they him. Know? The one tree. They the have tree. no clue. They even scam, but they scam the trees. Okay. Envy. 50-50. Wait, hold on, hold on. He's not out yet. Shiva's guard. They find him. He has. Oh, he pushed. He pushes okay, up. Okay. He's inside he, again. Oh, now Boba knows. They ping him Boba out. Boba knows. They he's know. The set. How you doing, Jackie? <laughs> How you doing, Jackie? Oh, oh my God. Envy. But they got the racks. Down for two minutes. They got the racks, though. They got the racks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, refresher orb is finished. So they they forfeited three heroes and possibly an arc warden buy probably an arc warden buyback for Rex. I, I think that was the ultimate right play. Like they got the initiation on the silencer, they were dumping damage into him, but they still got off the global. I think at that point, Cloud Nine and Envy recognizes that they weren't gonna win that team fight in the long run, and so he made the next best choice. They, they might even buy back with this arc warden and either go for megas or like the GG. The top lane is exposed. Obviously, arc warden can get there quick, fast, in a hurry. Yeah. At the same time, DC might just base race it if that happens. And with a Terror Blade, it's possible they can even win that. I think the most important thing that DC needs to do right now is to get that top wave pushed out. If they don't, easy buyback and, and the grab happens. Trying to play the hero, dragging a conga line of creeps away. Oh, they're going back though. But they also need to force the MV buyback. And they MV know the needs, importance of MV this. MV needs to buy back right here, yeah. Terror Blade has his own, and the crush comes through right as the Manta's committed. Arrow over the top, not gonna hit Envy though, and now the chase is on Mason, trying to get off that Sunder, he will do so. That forces them on their heels already. The TP into the base, Envy's at your door, working on the range, they've gotta deal with him. BKB committed from the Tempest double, the range is down, the wreck continues! Oh, the melee is also getting chugged here. They don't have a big heavy hitter to bring this thing down. Finally, Bulba puts a stop to the shenanigans. But what is the game plan for this? Do you have to put either Mason or a bed next to that Rex? That's your only play, but that's not a winning play because you're not getting outside I the mean, base. I mean, Mason has Refresher now with 5k gold, so he's got buyback. I think you m consider, like, maybe try to get the Roche for the extra life for your other teammates, and you consider just an all-in base race scenario. But do you think you could get, get all of that done before you lose that last Rex? Uh, oh, I think at that point you're going to straight throw it. Okay. With the, the double metamorph, the multiple sunders in one fight, but it's tough, right? Well, you gotta go now then, right? Like, every second in this game is crucial because Envy is gonna just keep sending illusions. It's hard for any single one hero from Digital Chaos to actually defend against this because I think he just kills you. Like, that, that Tempest double just does so much damage at this point on. Yeah, it's a rock in a hard place, right? If they try to play it slow and wait, likely Envy at some point is going to find an opening, grab Megas. If they force the issue, they risk just losing that War of Attrition. Right. Against Death Prophet, with a refresher of her own, you're probably not winning a base race anyway. Yeah. Like, they really have to know that Fada won't be there. I think maybe they can out-race Envy alone with the Tempest double, but not, not Fada and Envy. No way. Yeah. And also, the, the other thing for Digital Chaos is that you need to keep all three lane pushed. Like, it's not good enough just to push a top lane. It's very easy for Envy to push, let's say, bottom, TPs to, to a lane, and then just, like, use Flutter on the Butterfly, use Force Staff, and then just push his way up to the top and take that last Rex. So, there's a lot of things that they need to do for Digital Chaos. Push out all the waves, make sure that nobody gets caught, stay together. He's asking a lot from this team. I lied, die. Just hitting some Ancients right now. Radiant Scan, scan reveals him. Highlight Die, why are you at the Ancients? Highlight Die, he does have his buyback available, even Pi. should he go down, and they're going to fight him now. Pi, he's at the Ancients. They're like, this can't possibly be a real hero. Is that hero. illusion? <laughs> he is tanking the smoke gig, so you know, I, yeah. that ensures they don't get to the yeah. base. And now immediately DC pings out bottoms. Like, okay, we can't. we actually can't do anything. We have to go back. I, it was so DC's like, there's no way this is a real hero, right? Like, why is like no one would be there? I like I would. I guess they had both uh, Windlight Shadow and Smoke on, so they're like, okay, our smoke broke. <laughs> That's it ensures they don't like get to your base and ambush you in the base. Yeah. As most likely DC are gonna clear that area before they would go. So, perhaps intended functionality. Very clowny in its appearance, at any rate. They are Clown 9 after all, Luke. This oh is boy, probably this the game. most important item, I think, for DC moving forward, BOTs. Yep. BOTs and items that can push waves. Your Maelstroms, Mjolnirs. I don't really know what else they could get. Maybe like a Nyx Eggs. Man, 4 I really need a Maelstrom. Like, I, I keep saying, oh, you know, in 20 minutes, Mirana will scale, but I don't know. Has he really scaled? I 
still wonder about the effectiveness of, of this Marana. The Marana does not feel useful. Yeah. I, I guess it's forced them to buy a couple of Like, gems. the Moonlight Shadow is nice, you know, like... Arrow it's okay. I don't, I don't think that'll... Like, that could be an entirely different hero. I mean, I guess... Like, imagine if they had a Centaur or, or something, you know, like... Right, right. Or, I don't know, an Axe or yeah. Legion Commander. The Batrider that got banned. Batrider for sure would have been better, but... They'll do what the best they can with what they have. I mean, how much of it to you is the item build from 4 of? Like, he went for the drums defusal. Do you think, in retrospect, obviously they, you know, maybe it doesn't go this long if he goes too greedy, but should he have gone for, like, at least one farming item? I think so. Um, again, easy to say in hindsight, but it's... DC were the ones that... Sorry, Cloud9 was the one that's actively trying to drag out the game. As we have a Hex going on a Mason, and he takes about half his HP. But yeah, I think he could have probably fitted a... Uh, He'd be like two items up by now. Exactly. And, and, you know, the waves gets pushed out much easier and stuff like that. In fact, I think Forev is going BOT2s. I think his job now is to just sit in home and defend without a Maelstrom and port back in. Well, he is going to get that farm, you know, slowly but surely, so... Not over yet for DC. Still... The same stakes in play as a, a lot of you have just started tuning in. DC, if they sweep the day, will be 10 and 6. Almost assured, I think, with that, a winner bracket berth going into TI. Cloud9 need just at least one or two games to have a good realistic shot at not being eliminated. So, yep. tons at stake for both teams. They see the Marana. Do they want to jump on him? MSS does have that Shadow Blade on cooldown. It seems like uh, MV is just adamantly not leaving the base at this point on. He doesn't have the buyback available for two more minutes, so he's going to sit in base and wait out for it. Obviously, Tempest Doubles will be constantly streaming out of the base, so he's kind of there in spirit, I suppose. Here comes the BOT2 plays as Envy also has a fresh pair of his own, and they're going to make their move. Crushing out for Ev, locking That's him down, kill. finishing him off. No buyback. That is the problem. Probably their least important hero in a team fight, but he is dead, and that's that means nobody to push in those lanes. Vada sits in the front. He's the tanky hero by far. A bed blinks in, hits God, a tier he three. He really wants those tier threes. But to at least gets the map control, but he's silenced up, controlled for now. Is the BKB ready? Mason is going to help usher C9 away. But still, this tower simply won't die. They get the hex off of Mason. Boba's there with the counterplay. Gets off the stun. BKB committed. Now the global forward. He's going to dive deep onto Envy. Once that arc warden drives him back to the well, but doesn't actually get the kill. And now the Marana buyback. All hell breaks loose. Abed standing his ground, poking with auto tech. Still has the Aegis. They're going to commit here for the Rex. And nobody is actually pushing him bottom. If Cloud9 don't get kills, they've just given up a free lane. Melee's down. Tier 3's down. Shrines are now exposed, but Abed's in deep. Can he make it out? 10k MMR. Now being got put hex. to the test. The Hex is there. No escaping this. Abed down. Oh, they're and 100 lose more. seconds on the sidelines. Mason in trouble. Has, got the, refresh. refresher, got has refresh. the BKP. Probably has to blow it. He turns the fight and now looks to get it on Fada. The exorcism ending. They won't have that damage. Now he's in trouble now. Graved up and controlled. He flaps away. But the volley of Autotex follows him. Mason, eyes on the prize. Drills him. And more buybacks flowing in. Still no rat. Still no split push from Cloud9. They are fighting Arrow head on Fada. into Arrow the Mason Fada. machine. And 4F does it. A dagger through the heart while the buyback is there. The exorcism is not. He's out for the counter. The crush comes through, but the BKB dodges it. MSS, a rare misplay from him. Abed surging in. Blood in the water. There's the sonic wave. Keeps on chasing, but gets bashed. Gets controlled. Gets tanked up. Can they finish him off? This quap is low. Hex, this hex. quap is low. This quap is dead. Oh my god, Mason, he's got to back off. They lose Dubu as well. That is four dead. They have a couple buybacks available, but it's going to be pushing the other way. MSS, ports on the back line, cuts him off. It's going to be Mason dying. He activates the PKB again. He's going to port out any bashes, any bash. Mason, give me the 17. There is no bashes available. The waves are pushing, but there is a big wave streaming in bottom. Will Envy make the TP? No, TPs are in cooldown. I think they're going to just walk it. One more melee racks intact. It's at full HP. Glyph is, I believe, available for DC. No Marana, no Quap. DC, they went all in and Cloud9 played it cool with the buybacks. They lack the exorcism for 20, but they've got still the firepower supremacy here walking into the fight. Do they go for the throne? Do they take another lane of Rax? Can Cloud9 scrape together a desperately needed win? 
Envy focuses on the melee, churning attacks into it, and it will drop one step closer to that third precious win. Now the tier four is exposed. C9 hesitate, probably waiting for that exorcism. Fada, one second, and he can move in. Do they realize there's no buybacks? Can they commit fully? They want to. It's marching forward, they get off the hex. They focus on Mason, the Terror Blade being forced back for now. Remember, he has buyback. He has Metamorph coming soon. He won't have the double Metamorph in this fight, but one might be enough. The I, refresher has cooled down. There's going to be a second know. exorcism, Lumi. Envy makes the move. There's the hex to start. Dubu pushed back, but has the global. The four staffs timed right. And Boba comes in. Huge stun from him. Now the Sunder. And getting active, he gets bashed instantly. Mason, does he fight? Does he run? He can't decide. Metamorph one second off. He doesn't have it yet. And now Fada keeps on chasing forward. Exorcism Ooh. number two. Ready to go. The throne's exposed. Cloud9 pulling it back. Saving themselves from themselves, it seems, as the throne drops low. It's DC against the world. The army of creeps march in and the throne will fall. Salvaged, saved, dodged. Oh, C9, they were way too close to losing this game, but they pull it out. C9 wins, Lumi smiles. But Lumi smiles while also having heart palpitations. <laughs> Oh my god, that game. Just the decision making towards the end. Mason just making the heroic plays, but unfortunately the odds were stacked against him. Abed going in, I don't want to say too hard, but at the same time that's the play he needed to do. But the, at the end of the day, they weren't even killing MV once. Like he had buyback throughout all of that. He made the ultimate save play. Cloud9 made it made the game super hard for themselves, but still able to pull but it But they won, and a win yeah. is a win for Cloud9. Now their destiny in their hands, it seems it will be a lot harder for Hellraisers to catch them. So guys, stick around. Game two, coming up. Try not to die on us.